Greetings, I'm Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus, and I'm excited to take you on a tour of some of the impressive new features that were introduced in OmniFocus 3.0 for Mac. If you've used OmniFocus 2 for Mac, you'll feel right at home in OmniFocus 3. On the surface, it looks quite similar, but as we dig a little deeper, you'll see that the Omni Group have added a lot of extra power and flexibility. The overall layout of the app is the same as it was before. The sidebar gives you quick access to your favorite perspectives and allows you to navigate your OmniFocus database. The outline is where you view, add, and manipulate tasks. And the inspector can be used to customize settings specific to your projects, actions, action groups, and tags. As before, there are buttons in the toolbar that allow you to hide and show the sidebar and hide and show the inspector. Let's begin our tour by looking at one of the most anticipated features in OmniFocus 3, multiple tags. In OmniFocus 2, you could apply a context to a project, group, or action. This allowed you to specify a condition that needs to be satisfied before you can take action. For example, there may be things that can only be done when you're at home, when you're with a specific person, or when you have an internet connection. A context might also be used to indicate how challenging something is allowing you to distinguish an action that you can practically perform in your sleep from something that requires you to be in a focused state. OmniFocus 2 only allowed you to specify one context. The problem is that not everything fits cleanly into a single context. For example, you might have a deep focus activity that you need to do at home. You're forced to choose between assigning either context of deep or context of home, even though both are equally valid. This restriction has been lifted in OmniFocus 3. Contexts are now called tags, and while a tag can represent a context, it can be used for other things as well. For example, you could apply the tag today to everything that you want to get done today, and vacation to everything that you want to accomplish before going on vacation. Let's process the inbox and in the process see how tags can be useful. There's an item to prompt me to phone John about going hiking on Saturday. I'll add this to my fun and recreation single action list by selecting the inline project field starting to type the name and pressing return. I'll then press the tab key to go over to the tag field. I'll start typing the word phone and then press return to confirm that this is the tag that I want to add. I'm also going to add a tag of today as this is something I'd like to get done today, even though it isn't technically due. I'll use the inspector to process the second item in the inbox. Moving the couch is a two-person job, and this is something that I'd like to take care of the next time Chris drops by. This is a one-off action related to taking care of my home, so I'll add it to my household single action list. I'll add two tags, home, because this is something that can only be accomplished when I'm at home, and Chris, because this action requires Chris's assistance. I'd also like to complete this task before going on vacation, so I'm going to add a tag of vacation. I can remove a tag by selecting it and pressing the delete key on my keyboard. And by right or control clicking on a tag, I can jump to a list of all of the actions that have this tag. Let's jump to a list of actions that have a tag of vacation. I'm now in the tags perspective looking at a list of actions that I'd like to complete before going on vacation. I can drag and drop these actions to change their order within the vacation tag without affecting their order in the project or any other tags. I'll drag the move couch to basement action to the top of the list. If items have more than one tag, I can easily jump to other tags. For example, if I control click or right click on the Chris tag, I can easily jump to all of the actions that require that Chris be present. It's also possible to specify what's called a forecast tag. We'll look at this feature shortly. And for more examples of practical uses for tags, visit learnomnifocus.com forward slash tags. Let's go back to the inbox and process the pay credit card bill item. I'll add this to my admin personal single action list and give it a tag of admin. By using an admin tag, I can easily pull up a list of all of the administrative tasks in my OmniFocus database, including those that are contained in other projects and single action lists. My credit card bill is always due on the first Friday of each month, so it makes sense to make this a repeating action. I'll start by setting the defer and due dates for the next payment. I'll set the due date to the first Friday in October, which is October 5th. 
and I'll set the defer date to September 21st, which is two weeks before the due date. I'll then check the repeat box and set this to repeat every one month. In this case, the repeat is tied to a specific day of the week, so I'll choose days of the week, and then specify the first Friday. I want the repeat to be based on the dates that I've assigned rather than the date that the action is completed, so I'll click Assign Dates. Now let's say I just paid this credit card. I'll click the status circle to mark this action complete. And a new action is created with a due date of November 2nd, which is the first Friday in November, and a defer date of October 19th, which is two weeks before the November due date. The forecast feature has also been enhanced in OmniFocus 3. Most notably, calendar events can now be displayed in line. In this example, there are a few appointments scheduled for the morning, and a couple of actions that are due at noon. Notice that the tasks that are due in the morning appear before the afternoon's appointments. If you have the Pro upgrade, you can also specify what's called a forecast tag. When you look at today in the forecast perspective, all of the items that have this tag will be displayed, as long as they're not on hold or deferred to the future. To access this feature, click the View button in the toolbar and specify a value for Today Shows Items with this tag. I'll add the Today tag that I created previously. Notice that a new section has been added that includes items with this tag. You can add or remove this forecast tag to tasks in a few different ways. Let's use Quick Open to go to a list of phone calls. You can access Quick Open by choosing Quick Open from the File menu, or by pressing Command O. I can then search for the phone tag, and when I'm ready, we'll press Return or Open to go to a list of phone calls. I'll choose to open my phone calls list in a new tab, an option that's available when you're running OmniFocus in full screen mode. If you weren't running OmniFocus full screen, you'd instead have an option to open in a new window. I can now select one or more items and right or control click. Notice that the contextual menu has an option to add tag today. You can also add or remove the today tag by going to the edit menu and choosing add or remove tag today. Or better yet, by using the control command L shortcut key. I'll select the Phone David action and press Control command l to add a Today tag. I'll close this New tab, and we're left with just the Forecast perspective. Notice that the Phone David action now appears in the Tag Today group. One of the signature features of the Pro Edition of OmniFocus is Custom Perspectives. This feature has taken a major step forward in OmniFocus 3. Let's look at a couple of examples. First, I'll create a custom perspective that shows all the incomplete actions that haven't been assigned at least one tag. I'll create a new perspective by choosing Add Perspective from the Perspectives menu. I'll give it a name of Untagged, and a shortcut key of Control u so that I can get to this perspective quickly and easily. Next, I'll click the Icon button. You'll see OmniFocus's new expanded library of icons. If you don't see one that fits the bill, you can click Choose File and choose an image from your Mac. You can also drag and drop a graphic into the icon box. The color you choose is also used when displaying the name of the perspective. I'll click on Red, and choose the Caution icon. Now let's specify the filter rules. In other words, the conditions that must be satisfied for items to appear in this perspective. I only want to show items that match all of the conditions I'll be specifying, so I'm going to leave the filter setting as All. I'll include the Availability Remaining rule, as I'm only interested in untagged items that are incomplete. I'll add another rule by clicking the plus button, and I'll choose Untagged, as I don't want actions with one or more tags to appear in this list. Since I'm only interested in actions that are untagged, I'll add another rule is not a project or group. Lastly, I don't want unprocessed inbox items to show up in this list. To exclude inbox items, I'll option click the plus button to create a new rule group. Then I'll change any to none, and choose in the inbox. In other words, don't include any items that are in the inbox. If I wanted to exclude other folders, I could add more rules to this rule group. I'll leave it as is for now. In the Presentation section, you can choose how you want to display these actions. 
I'll group and sort entire projects, and we'll group projects by folder, and sort projects by projects order. I can add this perspective to the sidebar by clicking on its star in the list of perspectives. And I can go to this perspective by choosing it from the Perspectives menu, by using the Control u keyboard shortcut that I created previously, or by double-clicking on the name of the perspective. I'll use Control u to go to this perspective. Notice what happens when I add a tag to one of the untagged items. And then choose Clean Up from the Organize menu, or press Command-K. The item will disappear from this perspective as it no longer matches the filter rules. Let's look at one more example. I'll create a custom perspective that shows me all of the things that I'd like to get done at home before going on vacation. I'll create a new perspective called Vacation Home. I'll choose green as the color. And we'll use a house icon. This time I'll change the availability to available, as I'm only interested in actions that are available to be worked on. I'm also only interested in actions that are tagged with home and vacation. So I'll click the plus button to create a new rule, tagged with all of, and select the tags home and vacation. I'll group these actions by project, and leave them sorted in the project's order. Lastly, I'll view this perspective by choosing Vacation Home from the Perspectives menu. These perspectives will also be available in OmniFocus 3 for iOS, as long as you've purchased the Pro upgrade. Similarly, any custom perspectives that you create on iOS are also available on your Mac. This is just a taste of what's possible with custom perspectives. Visit learnomnifocus.com forward slash perspectives for more examples. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out some of the new features in OmniFocus 3.0 for Mac. To learn more about these and other features and best practices, be sure to check out the articles, videos, and live sessions on Learn OmniFocus. Some content is available free of charge, and if you become a Learn OmniFocus member, you'll have full access to all of our content and will be eligible to attend our interactive live sessions. In closing, many thanks to the talented folks at the Omni Group for all the time and energy that they put into this release. This is Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.